All right, hey guys, I'm Aaron. Uh, like Tyler said, I work for a company called Synapse Studios, and I have been doing this for eight years, and I've been doing React for almost two years, which makes me a little ancient, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, and I like it a lot. So I'm going to talk about this demo that I built for my intro to React talk. And um, I think it's super cool, so I like showing it off. Um, the demo is um, the use of should component update. And most of us, many of us here know what that is already. Um, you're using it in your apps already. You're experts. Uh, hopefully, you'll still think this is cool um, and be able to use it to impress, you know, show people and explain what should component update is for yourself. Um, but for everybody else, um, when you're using a React component, it has a render method. We are all familiar with that. And whenever state and props change, that render method gets called. And that actually happens whenever the state and prop change for uh, your parents uh, of that component also. Implementing the lifecycle method should component update is how you prevent your children components, your child components, from rendering if they don't need to. So because they know about why they should render and when they should render, instead of rendering every time a parent component state or props update, it will look at, uh, look, observe the current state and props, decide that nothing's changed, or you know, whatever condition you have in your particular application, um, that it doesn't need to re-render. It's, it's not gonna look any different. And so that section of the app will not re-render. So this is important for uh, the example that Tyler reminded me of today, is that sometimes your app will be slow, and you're using React, and you wonder why, and you might trace it down to a lot of accidental render calls that don't need to be happening, and this is how you solve that problem. Uh, the case that I told Tyler about is will you use a, a, a React component plugin mixin or something, and, and it'll uh, to, to track scrolling, for example, so you know like your scroll position on the page. And if you attach that at the wrong point in your, uh, in your component hierarchy, it'll be changing you know, its state and props like up here, and then all the, everything re-renders, and you scroll once, and everything re-renders, and it slows everything down, and it sucks. So one, one solution is to just put that in the right spot, the only thing that needs to care about it. But if something high in the component hierarchy needs to care about it, should component update might be a solution for optimizing that kind of thing. So I'll explain what this is. Um, really quickly. Up here I have uh, a checkbox that says whether or not I should be using the lifecycle method should component update. Each of these boxes is a component. The application itself, the whole application is a component. And then each like an inner box is a component also. So, and then the number is a counter for how many times each component has rendered. Now I store uh, the number of clicks, how many times I've clicked on each component in an application like global state. So that means that when I click on any component, uh, the application, the whole application state will change, and it'll trigger re-renders down the whole tree um, when I'm not using should component update. So I can demonstrate that now. Uh, clicking around on everything, everything renders every time. Uh, that doesn't need to happen, you know? Um, uh, and, and I'll show code here in a minute, because this is a code demo. But uh, you know this um, this doesn't need to re-render itself. I'll uh, get into a little bit of a technical detail that the count of renders is actually outside of the the application state also. So state doesn't change for for most of the app, but the click count changes for the thing I just clicked on, and so it has to tunnel down through everything. Um, so when I turn should component update on, everything re-renders because it's global application state, and then. Now, uh, should component update is on. Now, the thing that I click on and its parents re-render. And because I'm using this like global state thing, that's just kind of how it has to work, that all the parents all the way up the tree um, re-render. But so now, now you can see that the, click, or the render counts only change for the things I click on and their, their parents up the tree. And this is one of the coolest, most powerful things about React, is that you get this like ability to fine-tune your front-end application's performance in a way that you can't or can't easily do with a lot of other frameworks. Um, so if there are any questions, I will take them now. Yeah. Oh, so when the parents render, is it top parent in the whole application? Yes. 
Yeah, yes. So like in that case, when like right now with should component update is on, and I click, um, the application as a whole re-renders. But what that means in this case is that this checkbox and like the little frame here re-renders, and as it comes down, you know, as the event propagates around, um, the components decide whether or not they need to re-render. So the whole thing, like these these components aren't re-rendering, but the frame itself is. If that's if that makes sense. Yeah. So what? So uh, maybe you're going to talk about this, but where do you determine? Because like for this, right? Should component update is a way to solve this. Probably a better way to solve it would be to put that state on the object on the component that actually cares about it, instead of having it be global application state, right? So where do you sure. where do you draw that line of So there are a lot of cases where, um, so, so what he's starting to get into is this idea that um, has come up where we don't actually store a lot of state on, on our components anymore in React. Um, but there are you know, cases where, um, I, think, I think one of the more common cases is something like a list view, for example, where like, you have a list, like a, a list view component um, that takes like an array of data from somewhere, like Redux or whatever, and then makes list items. So if most of your, if you add an item, most of your list doesn't change, but the thing right at the bottom did. You need to add one or whatever. So that's like a, a common example um, where like any anything where you have a uh, a component that's that's a child of another one, and that one controls it. That that com like any controlled component really, that that doesn't have its own state about anything, but its parents giving it stuff, and it's not connected to Redux or it's not getting anything from Flux. That's a good opportunity to start thinking about this. And Redux actually will take care of a lot of this for you. Um, you still have to be careful about it, but um, if you're using Redux, this is you know you you find yourself not implementing should component update manually yourself. So, five minutes, I'm going to show code, because we're all programmers, right? Um, I'm going to ignore, so this is, this is my initial state. Uh, sorry, Vim, everybody. Um, and you'll see that I have uh, these num variables here. They all keep track of how, how many times each component has been clicked on. And this, again, is the global application state. Uh, these variables here, down here at the bottom, which I will scroll up. These variables here keep track of uh, the actual render counts. And like I said, they're outside of state. They could be in state, and I could use should component update to monitor them and, and know whether or not I should uh, render the, the thing. But I wanted my should component update uh, implementations to be simpler for demo purposes. And then, right, right. It's something outside of, of the actual application state that is just being because it's all one big file, which I would would not do in an actual thing. I get there. It's, it's in scope, and I can just call it as a global variable. Um, so by changing the render count, it doesn't like trigger another re-render without me. You know, all that, all that stuff. So here's my application. Component, my the the top of the hierarchy, um, and I've got here's my render method. I've got a div and my four quadrants. They're all the same uh, thing, the, the same component. I've got a quadrant component, which is where I first start implementing should component update, and this is where I really wanted to get. So the com the quadrant itself rent, uh, implements the lifecycle method should component update. And you see me doing if next props dot updating because that's the, the toggle of the checkbox, um, whether or not I should be using this. If I'm not supposed to be using it, I just return true because that's the default behavior. And if I am supposed to be using it, I use this cool method provided to you by Facebook and React. It's called uh, shallow compare. And what it does is a super naive comparison between um, your, uh, the, your current props and state, and then your next props and state. And this is one of the reasons why immutable data is really great, is because if you're using immutable data, this is all you need to do 
to compare really complicated objects and to see if they're the same object. But I'm not, uh, but I'm using, uh, you know, normal data types, no crazy nested objects or anything. So it just loops through the object and basically says, um, are these things all equal? If they are, you know, return false because I don't need to update. If they are not, return true because I, um, I do need to render. And that is, most of the time, if you're using immutable data structures, all you have to do to get uh, should component update working. And I'm using fancy uh, classes. If you were using um, the, the older, the normal style, you get these mixins, and it's called the pure render mixin. You import the mixin, you add the mixin to your component, and it does this automatically for you. It's a shorter way of doing the same exact thing. I have a couple minutes for questions. So if anybody has any questions. So this is, it's not built in. I have to make use of this even, and it's not smart enough to know that I'm using some type of immutable to just do it for me then? No, absolutely not. If you're using Redux, Redux has it built in. Um, but no, by default, React is not doing this automatically for you. OK, but I'm using Redux, so I'm probably getting away with Yes, you're probably getting some of this um, on your own. Unless you're doing something like, um, in your connect methods, creating a function and then passing that function in as props. Um, if, if you're ever passing something as not immutable in, uh, as props in your Redux connect methods, it's going to be like, no, that's a new function every time, and it's not equal, and re-render every time. So oh, one more question. Rendering, rendering as like a directional thing happens from top down, typically. So the, the application, whatever your root component is, uh, renders and then calls the render on the children all the way down. And that's why the children get to decide whether or not they, get to, they have to re-render without having to like bubble up a render calls up the tree or something weird like that. So it's typically in React, everything is going from the top down. And with that, I'm at 12 minutes, everybody. Sorry I had to speak a little bit loud or quickly. Uh, if you have a question, I will answer it afterwards. Um, yeah, and thank you, everybody. <laughs>